In the previous videos, we have discussed about the steps of designing the pre-stress member. It started with the checking of the stresses within the serviceability limit state. Next, we proceed with the design for the ultimate limit state. So far, we have discussed about the design for the shear reinforcement and also torsional reinforcement. There is one more check that we need to do, which is the combined actions of the shear and torsion. In this video, we're going to discuss about how we're going to check for the shear and torsion for the pre-stressed concrete member. These are the equations that being used to check the combined actions of the shear force and torsional load. Under normal circumstances, these equations is being used. There will be two main components here, which is the torsional resistance and also the shear resistance. Within each of the component here, it involves a ratio of the load versus its capacity. Same goes to the shear and its capacity. The summations of these two elements will need to be less than 1.0. This is a conservative estimation of the amount of reinforcement bar for the torsions and shear reinforcement. It is basically quantifying the allowance in terms of the capacity over the loads acting on the member. This ratio here is actually quantifying to which percentage of the capacity is being used up for the torsional load. Same goes to the ratio for the shear resistance. Summations of both represent the percentage of the capacity of the section being used up by both loading conditions. Theoretically, the total capacity needs to be greater than the total load adding on the member. We have discussed about VED in the previous lecture. Also, the equations to determine the VRD max. The torsional loops also been discussed. Now, we are looking into the TRD maximum, which is the maximum torsional resistance of the section. TRD maximum can be determined from this equation in the functions of new one, which is usually associated with the shear resistance. In fact, it is the same equations for the new one in the shear resistance. There will be alpha CW. This again is very similar in the definitions of the maximum shear resistance VRD max as presented in this slide here. You will need to determine the R for you to determine the alpha CW. The R is quantified by this equation where sigma CP is the compressive stress caused by the pre-stressing tendon. Divide the pre-stressing force with the cross-sectional area of the section. You will obtain sigma CP. Next, you need to determine the design strength of the concrete, which is obtained by dividing this FCK with the partial factor of safety 1.5. Find the value of R and then identify the range it is in in order for you to define the alpha CW. Next, you need to determine the FCD which is obtained here and there will be the functions of AK. This is the effective cross-sectional area of the sections subjected to the torsion as obtained based on the diagram indicated here. Next, we are looking into the thickness of the wall 
which is represented by this or this and lastly you need to substitute the angle of the torsion which is taken as 45 degree this equation is applied when the normal shear reinforcement is provided specifically in terms of the shear reinforcement if you provide the normal shear reinforcement here then this equation is being applied there is another set of equations it is when the minimum reinforcement is provided specifically in terms of the design for the shear reinforcement if the nominal shear link is provided then you will use this set of equation the equations have the same structures as the normal condition except this capacity is determined by the concrete capacity without reinforcement it is again the ratio of the capacity with the loading for both torsional and shear resistance the summations of the two needs to be less than 1.0 as for the VRDC here you can refer from these two equations here you know that there will be uncracked regions and cracked regions depending on the regions that you are checking you will use the VRDC accordingly now we look at TRDC this represent the torsional resistance of the member of each concrete alone without reinforcement it is given by the equation here in the functions of the effective area of the torsional also FCD and also the effective thickness of the member the effective thickness of the member can be determined from these equations which is the effective area divided by its perimeter coming back to the principles of design for shear torsions and shear and torsional resistance of the member you need to first design the shear reinforcement to ensure it pass and then design for the torsional reinforcement to ensure it pass and then do the final checking for the combined situations of the shear and torsion there is two outcome for you to obtain the shear reinforcement it is either with the nominal shear reinforcement or the normal shear reinforcement this is depending on the VRDC which is the shear resistance of the concrete itself whether it is greater than the load added on it and then for the torsional design you will adopt the equations for you to determine the amount of the torsional reinforcement bar provide adequate reinforcement bar greater than the one calculated then you will use the equations of the combined shear and torsion to check the adequacy of the provided reinforcement bar you know that the equations for the shear and torsion is slightly more conservative the member may pass individually for the shear and torsion but when come to the shear and torsion together the section might fail in this case you will need to add up either the shear reinforcement or the torsional reinforcement and then resubstitute into the equations to check if it is adequate the reason that the improvement can be made on the torsion and the shear is that both the shear reinforcement and also the longitudinal torsional reinforcement is actually helpful in resisting the torsional load both by nature are preventing the propagation of the cracks due to the twisting moment